So you've played 10 minutes of Rainbow Six Siege, and now you think you have what it takes to be an operator. In this Godot 3.2 slash 3.1 tutorial, I will show you how to create a basic first-person character controller that you can use to make all kinds of first-person shooters. Start with an empty scene and create a new kinematic body node. Call it whatever you want. Next, create a collision shape node as a child of the kinematic body. Give it a new capsule shape, then under the transform tab, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Then click on capsule shape and set its radius to 0.5 and its height to 1.5. Right click on your kinematic body node and create a mesh instance child. Give it a new capsule mesh, rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis, then click on the small mesh preview window and set its radius to 0.5 and its height to 1.5. After that, right click on your kinematic body node and create a spatial node as its child. Call it head. Right click on head and add a camera node as a child of it. Click on the head node and move it up to about where the head of your character should be. Makes sense, right? Now, attach a new script to your kinematic body node and name it whatever you want. We're going to create quite a few variables here, so feel free to pause the video if you need time to copy all of this down. We're going to write var speed equals 7, var acceleration equals 20, var gravity equals 9.8, var jump equals 5, var direction equals vector 3, var velocity equals vector 3, var fall equals vector 3, on ready var head equals dollar sign head, oh, and I almost forgot, var mouse sensitivity equals 0.05. The first thing we need to do is make the camera camera follow your mouse movement. To do this, we're going to create a new function called func underscore input event. In this function, anytime there is an input, like if you press a button on your keyboard, or you move your mouse, or you do anything in real life to tell the game to do something, that input is marked as an event. First, we're going to rotate the character horizontally. So write if event is input event mouse motion. So if the game detects mouse movement, rotate underscore y deg to rad minus event dot relative dot x multiplied by mouse sensitivity. This takes how much the mouse has moved horizontally, multiplies it by the mouse sensitivity, and applies that movement to the horizontal rotation of the character. Now you can use your mouse to rotate the character horizontally, but we also need vertical rotation. We'll go back into the script and write rotate underscore x deg to rad minus event dot relative dot y multiplied by mouse sensitivity. We'll also go into our ready function, which is where you put code that you want to run the moment the character is loaded into the game and write input.setMouseMode input.mouseMode captured. This hides your cursor and locks it inside the game window so your range of rotation isn't limited by the window size. Now you can aim in all directions, but you'll notice things start getting a bit wonky. This is because rotating objects in 3D is complicated and rotating something on multiple axes can mess with the orientation of the other axes. To fix this, we need to keep the horizontal and vertical rotation separate, and we do this by changing rotate underscore x to head dot rotate underscore x. Now we can aim our character correctly, but if we rotate the camera too far vertically, it will turn upside down. So to fix this, write head dot rotation dot x equals clamp head dot rotation dot x deg to rad minus 90 deg to rad 90. Now you can aim all the way up and all the way down and you can't make the camera flip upside down. Next we're going to make the character move. To do this we're going to create a new function func underscore process delta. This function updates every frame and it's where we're going to put our movement code. We're going to go into project and project settings and in the input map tab we're going to write move forward in the action box and click add. We'll do the same for move backward, move left, and move right. We'll also add an action called jump. Then we'll assign whatever key we we want to each action by clicking on the plus on the right, selecting key, and pressing the key we want. I use WASD and spacebar. Then we'll return to our process function and write if input.isAction pressed move forward. By the way, if you're wondering what this particular line of code does, that's just a piece of code that makes the mouse cursor visible when you press the escape key. I was going to talk about it in the video, but then I forgot to put it in the script, so I have to talk about it now. Direction minus equals transform.basis.z. So when the forward key is pressed, the desired direction of travel is set to the direction the character is facing. To move backwards, it's pretty much the same thing, right? Elif because the character can either move forward or backwards, but not both at the same time. Input dot is action pressed, move backward, direction plus equals transform dot basis dot z. For left and right movement, it's pretty much a copy paste of the previous two chunks of code, but you'll be using move left and move right, and you use transform dot basis dot x instead of z. Pause the video if you need time to write all of this down. If we try to run the game now, the character won't do anything, and that's because all we've done is establish which direction we want to move. We haven't yet given the instructions on how to move, 
move. To fix that, first we need to write direction equals direction dot normalize. This is done so that the character doesn't move faster while moving diagonally. After that, we write move and slide direction times speed vector three dot up. This is wrong, but let's see what happens if you run the game. I can press a move button to move, but now the character will keep moving forever because we've set a direction with nothing to set the direction back to zero when we let go of the button. To fix this, go to the top of the process function and write direction equals vector three. This resets the direction to zero every frame except on the frames where you're actively holding down a movement key and setting a direction to move. To make the movement more realistic, we're going to add smooth acceleration by writing velocity equals velocity dot linear interpolate direction times speed acceleration times delta. Then we add velocity equals in front of move and slide and we change direction times speed to velocity. Now the character smoothly accelerates from zero to max speed. However, feel free to ignore all of this if you like the arcadey movement style. And finally, we're going to make the character jump. To do this, add a new line of code under direction equals vector three. If not is on floor, fall dot y minus equals gravity times delta. And under that write, if input dot is action just pressed jump, fall dot y equals jump. Then underneath everything, write move and slide, fall, vector three dot up. Watch my two minute video on gravity and jumping if you want more information about how this works. Congratulations, you now have a first person character controller that can move, aim, jump, and if you're smart enough, do your taxes and fill the empty void in your heart. In the next video in this tutorial series, I'll show you how to make your character teleport around like Tracer from Overwatch. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to share it, bell it, and comment it. Thank you, have a nice day.